we're so much a part of the world around us. No less so than that little aquarium. It depends on us. It absolutely and utterly does depend on us. Oh, it can be ignored for an extended period of time, but ultimately it depends on us as a child. Depends on parents. Let us be aware of its real needs by relaxing and enjoying and learning, by developing that symbiotic relationship with their aquarium that allows us to touch it in a way that is healing and helping and nurturing and not destructive, not violent, not breaking up and tearing down. Someone posted a comment in a recent video in which they said the refusal to apply the techniques of science to our aquarium is only done by those who are stupid. I thought that was rather interesting. Talk about a mentality of superiority, as though somehow the principles of science, which really are not laws, they are techniques. They are procedures. The procedures of science, which aim to understand reality, somehow are only applied by those who are intelligent enough to use them. And the rejection of all of those techniques, all of those devices, all of those mechanical systems, testing systems, and the like, are avoided only by those too ignorant to be able to use them. Thank you. You have properly and appropriately put me precisely where I belong, with the stupid and the ignorant. It strikes me that anyone who believes they understand the dynamics of nature in a little aquarium are struggling to somehow grasp that which is essentially unknowable. So here's the thing. We can apply all sorts of technological developed systems for trying to achieve something or we can allow the processes that are occurring in that fish tank to simply go on, to not interfere with them, to allow them to do whatever it is they're going to do and make of itself a living organism, truthfully, an organism of organisms in a real sense. Isn't that what we're trying to do? It's not radical science. It's really quite the opposite. It is the most simple and basic and elemental approach you can take to setting up an aquarium. It is superior to simply throwing water and fish in a tank and a bunch of food. It's superior only that it allows for something more to happen. It's an attempt to replicate what exists in nature. So we want to create an environment, a simple, basic environment, something a three-year-old can do, something very elemental, very simple, very basic, a little dirt, and get the right ingredients in it. We've got lots of resources to explain how to do that. We'll even sell it to you, all pre-made. Just buy it and stick it in. Cap it with some sand, fill it with water, put plants, a few fish, and try to get some microbiota, some living organisms from the wild, from nature, and bring them into seed, to culture, 
that aquarium. So it will begin to take hold of itself, to, to develop, to become a, a living thing. And sit back and let it happen. That is the nature of a natural aquarium. To essentially keep your hands off. To let it do what it is going to do. If it gets cloudy, let it be cloudy. If it gets crystal clear, let it be crystal clear. If the plants melt and die, let them melt and die. Let it do what it's going to do. Sit back and be an observer. Now you can rearrange things, and you certainly should. To make it suit your aesthetic sensibilities, that's fine and appropriate. But don't try to change the chemistry. There's no need to do that. Whatever your water is, is what it is. Nature doesn't only select certain water from certain places to live in. It thrives everywhere, in every imaginable water condition. Whatever your water is, is what it is. Give life a chance to thrive in it. Give it a chance to accommodate itself to it. You don't need to change the pH of your water. Put the organisms in there and let them decide whether they can survive in this or not. You'll be amazed how effectively they will survive in conditions you might have read were absolutely inappropriate. Give it a chance to do what it does best. And don't be mucking around in there trying to change this and trying to change that, throwing chemicals in or doing something else that's going to radically and dramatically affect the whole environment. Don't do that. It's unnecessary. And in point of fact, it is destructive of natural processes. You don't need to do that. What then is the role, your role, in this little environment? Well, it is to nurture, to find ways that you can provide support. One of the simplest ways is with food, and that's something we all do. We control the food. We tend to overdo it. We tend to either put the wrong kinds of food or too much food and, and create an environment that struggles to manage all of this nutrient that's being dumped inside it. That creates its own problem. So we need to develop some sensitivity to this environment so that we can help it to thrive and not overwhelm it with their kindness. You know the idea. You can kill with kindness. You do too much of a good thing and it becomes a bad thing, doesn't it? So don't do that. It's very simple not to do that. Sit back and relax. Enjoy. The principle here is to enjoy, to be inspired by, to learn from, and to grow in a real sense in your relationship with this environment. Here's a little secret, something that some refer to as spiritualism and others understand as simple natural dynamics. You can develop a symbiotic relationship with this aquarium in which it will seek to please you. It will thrive under your management. If your management is gentle, sensitive, aware, kind, loving, generous, and you do that by sitting quietly and observing. Spending time enjoying what is happening in that aquarium, and, and you will come to an understanding 
a deeper kind of understanding in which you do a little thing and you sit back and you watch the effect and you understand the effect. <laughs> what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? We're talking about the reason we do this in the first place. The reason we set up that aquarium is to give us pleasure. The only way we can get pleasure from it is if we do that which pleasures it. Do that which pleases the organisms living in there. We learn to do that carefully, gently, by observing, by growing, and learning, and understanding. Take your time. Make this hobby a life experience and not something you try to throw together to look pretty in a corner for a minute and then abandon. That's not fair to you, much less the living creatures you put in that tank. Do something more for yourself and something more for that aquarium. Make it part of your life, part of your joy part of your celebration, something in which you take pride because it gives you so much that instills pride in you. I feel like I'm preaching. I guess I am. <laughs> well, so be it. Too many will not get this, but you know, there are those of you who will get this, who really will get it, and who will internalize it. And you will be the future of this hobby because you will be the ones who love the aquarium hobby. Thanks for paying attention. Hope I had something to say that was worth hearing.